Good evening. Coast Guards have praised organisers and competitors in this year's Round the Island race after just a few minor incidents were reported. Nearly one and a half thousand yachts took part in near perfect conditions, which led to a new record of under three hours being set. Hannah Costigan has more. Five, four. Competitors call it the London Marathon of Sailing, with everyone from Olympians to enthusiastic amateurs taking part. Like Charlie Boutwood from Lewis, this is his first round the island race. He was diagnosed with brain tumours shortly before his second birthday. Twenty years on, he and his father are racing to raise money to fund research at Portsmouth University. So I had a brain tumour at 20 months, when I was 20 months old. And uh, from that I wasn't allowed to play contact sports because I had a connection in the back of my head. So I couldn't play rugby, um, football. And then my dad started doing sailing. But I took to it. Yeah. Father and son were among the 16,000 competitors crossing the start line at 5am. They were expecting it to take them 10 hours. The fastest time on record is 3 hours, 8 minutes and 29 seconds. But for many, it's not about the records. It's about having a good day out in the water and raising money for charity. The official race charity is the Dame Ellen MacArthur Cancer Trust, which had five boats participating. Also taking part, a crew from Towing the Water, which helps rehabilitate injured soldiers, with Hampshire's Dee Kafari at the helm. But in a race, someone has to finish first, and Ben Ainsley did, smashing the previous record. You know, after a very tough day for everybody here today with Andrew Simpson's funeral, um, this was a nice thing to come out and do this race in, in his honour, really, and to get, the, to get the record is extra special. In under three hours, he was back before lunch, but for other crews, it would take a full day's sailing to get back to port. Hannah Costigan, ITV News, on the Isle of Wight. Well, there's much more on the Round the Island race on our website, itv.com forward slash news forward slash meridian. Meanwhile, it's been announced that the next clipper round the world yacht race will start from London in September. Previously, the 40,000 mile event has been hosted by Southampton and Portsmouth. Well, today's sunshine in parts of the region is good news, not just for sailors, but for those enjoying a day out on the beach or in the country. But it's also brought a note of caution from the Environment Agency. It's warning of the dangers of jumping into rivers to cool off, and comes a year after a teenager died when he leapt from Donington Bridge in Oxford. Officials say there could be unseen hazards. Now, the weather may have taken a turn for the better, but the cost of the extreme winter conditions is still being counted. Reading Borough Council is to consider spending half a million pounds on refilling potholes caused by ice and rain. It's proposing hiring additional maintenance teams to tackle the problem. In other news, police have launched an investigation after a man's body was found by firefighters tackling a blaze in a barn near Maidstone. Emergency services were called to the building at Four Store Lane in Coxheath yesterday afternoon. Investigators are trying to establish how the fire started. A new £21 million hospital has been given the go-ahead in Dover. The new state-of-the-art hospital will be built at the existing Buckland site, completed by Christmas next year. Local people have previously campaigned for better medical facilities in the town. It's where the Royal Navy teaches its new recruits all about weapons and warfare. But today, the new sailors were let out of the classroom as HMS Collingwood at Fareham in Hampshire opened its doors to the public. Heather Edwards was among the visitors. It's fast, furious and taken very seriously. Sailors have been competing in the field gun race for over 100 years and they train hard as the gun is the same weight as a family car. This is a different type of physical fitness to, to running or jogging or to riding a bike. It's very much explosive power, starting and stopping, twisting and turning and, and lifting. So it, it is, it's a full body workout. Doing well in this heat, the service's correction centre from Colchester. These sailors and soldiers have all broken the rules and the race is seen as a good way to rehabilitate them. But today was very much about HMS Collingwood as it welcomed families and local people behind its walls. And you think when you grow up, you might want to be in the Navy? Um, yeah. no, no, I'm going to be a diver. Oh, okay. What are you going to be? Um, in the Navy. Most of my career I've been at sea, so I rarely ever get a chance to come to Collingwood uh, and enjoy an open day with the kids. So this is the first time for me since I joined up and thoroughly enjoying the day. 
we think it's extremely important for the Navy to be able to not only welcome our own families to where we work, but also to welcome the, the local community. And, and I think uh, you will have seen today just how many people were, were able to show around what the Navy does in an establishment the size of HMS Collingwood. Enjoying warfare from another era, but as well as the funfair and the face painting, a serious message about what the Royal Navy is doing in the 21st century. Heather Edwards, ITV News, Fairham. Now, most of us have heard of the Scout motto, Be Prepared, and it certainly couldn't have been more fitting today, as 80 Scouts helped spruce up an East Sussex landmark. But as Andrea Thomas reports now, this wasn't your average monument. It was the ancient carving of the Long Man of Wilmington, set on a rather steep hillside. Picking their way across the South Downs like little mountain goats, it was a bit of a balancing act for the Hailsham and Heathfield scouts this morning. It's been quite awkward because whenever you try and sit down, you kind of slide back down again. Yeah. So it's a bit hard. So how have you been keeping yourself steady? Um. <laughs> Once they'd got used to it, though, it was more a case of dob, dob, dob than dib, 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 as everyone got down to work. Painting not chalk outlines, but concrete bricks installed over the top of the Long Man in the 1960s. The last time the Long Man was painted was about three or four years ago and it was done by a troupe of local Morris dancers. So this is the first time the Scouts will have a chance to have a lasting view of their handiwork. Yeah, it'll be a nice thing to just be like, I painted that. Because it's such like, a good thing to say, because not many people will be able to say, I painted the Long Man of Wilmington. You feel a bit famous? <laughs> yeah. Replacing the old Bob a Job scheme, today's project was the first of many to mark Scout Community Week. This is a fantastic thing that Scouts do Community Week. It raises the awareness of scouting. Hopefully some leaders will come out of it. The children have a great time and we're raising money at the same time. Everyone's a winner. And if you want to see the results for yourself, just drive by any time and look up. You can't miss it. Andrea Thomas, ITV News, Wilmington. And finally, callous thieves have stolen a dog and her seven newborn puppies. The black and white border collie and her pups were taken from a private stable in Horsemondon in Kent. Their owner is appealing for help to find them. I would never have believed until that moment anyone could do such a thing. This tiny little two-day-old puppies and my lovely Lizzie, who was not a pedigree dog, but she was just a border collie that I'd had three generations of and this was to be the fourth generation. Let's hope they're found. Now, as we saw earlier, fine weather today for some of us, but will it continue? Here's Philippa Drew with the forecast. That's us driving on, mm -hmm. us driving off in France, mm -hmm. and us outside a chateau. Oh. Driving to Europe. Eurotunnel on the shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Hello again. Well, June has got off to a glorious start. Lots of bright weather around across the region and it's going to continue for the next few days. Plenty of dry and fine weather, warm in the sunshine, but still on the cool side overnight. So what's happening? Well, high pressure is situated down to the southwest at the moment. It's going to slowly drift its way northeastwards across the UK over the coming days, bringing all the dry and the settled weather. And that's certainly the case tonight. Largely dry, clear skies, more so to the west. And here, temperatures down to around 8 or 9 Celsius. A little more cloud just clinging on around the likes of the Kent coast. Looking ahead to tomorrow morning, and I think we'll lose any thicker cloud out across the east of Kent, and for many of us, plenty of sunshine around to start the day. For the afternoon, a little more in the way of cloud bubbling up, but it shouldn't spoil too much of the sunshine, and temperatures doing well once again, up to around 18 or 19 Celsius. So here are the tide times for tomorrow. You can see for most places around 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. And looking ahead to the next few days, plenty of dry and fine weather continuing, plenty of sunny spells, light winds, and temperatures slowly on the rise. Ah! Eurotunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. <laughs>